I grew up in, in the 40s and 50s, and so most of my years as a teenager and so forth were in the 1950s, and there probably wasn't a more pristine time to grow up. It was quite different growing up in, uh, uh, in Newport and, and uh, Bellevue in those days, the, the 40s and the 50s. There were uh, six children, six of us, in a relatively small house in, uh, I, I think, a fairly typical post-war environment. Walla Hills was an interesting place because it taught you more than just the academics. It's a very cosmopolitan high school. People from absolutely every walk of life economic status, gender, color, whatever, are uh, students at Wally Hills High School. And uh, that experience really broadens one's world because you really then, by the time you leave high school and go off to college, you've had the experience of dealing and working and playing interactively with all, all kinds of folks. Uh, I graduated from Latin school at the age of uh, 15, and then therefore college at 19. And so that gave me the opportunity, actually, to go to law school. After law school, I went to work with Arthur Anderson in the, in the tax area. I was far more um, uh, attuned, I think, to the accounting profession than to the, to the legal profession. And, uh, and in those days, Arthur Anderson was hiring uh, lawyers uh, for their tax uh, division, and that's where I landed with them. And that was a great career uh, start for me. I was a pre-med major in, uh, in college and changed in my junior year to history and economics. I took a lot of interviews like every senior college student does with different companies uh, looking for a job and, and just found it quite frankly to be very boring. The, uh, the interviews were boring and you know there wasn't much excitement that they, they weren't presenting their companies very well in my view. And so um, I decided to uh, do something different and something exciting and uh, so I joined the Marine Corps. So. It wasn't exactly a straight path to anywhere, but uh, it worked out for me, and that proved to be a fabulous experience. And then I went to work for two large companies, uh, Armstrong Court Company, and they had a fabulous training program, which I was a beneficiary of, and, uh, and had a good experience with them, and then was invited to come back to Cincinnati to run their business development operation at the First National Bank of Cincinnati. That was another great learning experience. But that experience is where I really got a high interest in finance and capital and uh, entrepreneurship. The early days of, of starting the business were not really any different from what every other entrepreneur goes through. I had written a small business plan. I was by myself. As we started the business as consultants to entrepreneurs and, and companies. But along the way, and, and, and actually a little bit before Ted and I hooked up as partners, I was asked to help two companies here in town that became substantive businesses. One was a company called J-Corps Communications, which had been started by Terry Jacobs. He was looking for capital to begin a, a series of acquisitions of radio stations around the country. And so that was the first time that I decided that maybe a beginning of some merchant banking whereby we would put some of our own money into the companies that we were dealing with uh, as investors along with the money that we brought to the table from the outside. And so JCOR was the first of those. Glenn was looking for somebody who could do the sorts of things that he was hoping I could do and I needed a place to land. And uh, I thought it fit very well with my previous experience, not only practicing law, practice accounting, but also the corporate development work that I had done at SHV, including the venture capital investing that we did there. The, the second one was one that was probably the most exciting in the sense of what it really did for the community. And that was Newport Steel, which had been closed down by its parent company and put about 2,000 people out of work over in uh, northern Kentucky and greater Cincinnati. We put together a combination of government money, private investors, their, their first major cus customers paid up front for their products. So we were able to generate a lot of capital that wasn't necessarily all costly. The government money was a grant the customer's money of working capital up front had no cost to it. And then we were able to go to one of the New York banks and get them to underwrite the rest of the transaction. Within a year, uh, 2,000 people were back at work. That merchant banking, those two examples, 
you got Ted and myself talking about what else we might be able to do. And to his credit, Ted came up with the idea that we should try to uh, do an SBIC venture fund. And it appeared to be exactly the right place for us to broaden our business. When we hit the ground, we were one of two venture funds here in Cincinnati, and the, the, certainly the industry was in Cincinnati was in its infancy in terms of organized uh, venture funds such as uh, such as we uh, such as we had. But it's very nice to be able to sit back now and see everything that's developed here. Not that we get credit for all of that, but I think the fact that we were on the ground and made a substantial number of investments around town and around the region have contributed to the growth of the, of the private equity business in Cincinnati. Glenn and Ted's greatest business accomplishment is the formation of River Cities Capital. They accomplished that back in the early 1990s, which was not a great economic environment. And the capital business is, is uh, really interesting in that it's a money game, a game of confidence. And it was amazing to me that folks like Glenn and Ted could have built up so much credibility in the community to get folks to what is basically blindly invest in them as people without knowing the companies that they might choose to put those funds into. And now as I look back at it, I, I try to think about the things that I valued about being in this industry. We still do in our sixth fund, which is which has just been started. We still have investors that invested with us in our first fund, and I take a lot of comfort in that 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 we were able to meet the objective that we had set out, which was to make our investors some money, and and ourselves to ha make a good living for ourselves and the employees of River Cities. Uh, so I find great satisfaction of that. I find great satisfaction in the number of jobs that were created by the companies that we helped. And while we don't know an exact number, um, we did a little study around here the other day, and we think that all of all the companies that we've invested in, there's probably 11,000 jobs that have been created. Um, and, you know, that's a, that's a very great feeling to have. And, uh, and I think about all those families that are working and so forth. And oh, by the way, our investors have done well. And, and uh, those are positive things to look back on and you feel good about what, you, what you've been involved in for 25 years.